A home is a lot of work. Just plain work. When work at home is planned and organized for cooperation, there can usually be more time for leisure. I'm certainly in favor of those things. Leisure, fun. Who is it? Wouldn't we all be happier if we worked out a little system for living together in harmony? But how can we manage them? We'll have to work out the full answer together. Say, Mom, it's well. Most family problems can be solved through frank and friendly discussion, which points the way to a happy family life. You know, this is beginning to be quite a family project. It certainly is. Hey, thanks for being here today. My name is Brad. I am the worship pastor here. I get the honor to serve here at Rock Family Church. Can we hear it for our worship team this morning? Man. The guy leading, he is, uh, his name is Art. He's from Russia, from Russia, and he's living here. He's uh, going to the college, uh, Karis Bible College, and so he's part of our team. He's a worship pastor, and so it's awesome. I mean, he's got more energy than I do, and I'm like, you need to tone it down, man. No, I'm just fine. <laughs> he did a great job. <laughs> Before I get into my message, I want to just tell you, uh, I want to honor Pastor Dean and Kim. Thanks for this opportunity to, to share today. We're kicking off a new series. But before we do that, you saw on the announcements, Creative Circles. The beginning of the year, God started speaking to me to just turn off all the noise, all the crazy stuff going on and around. And he encouraged me to start praying for eyes to see, ears to hear. And one of the first things he showed me was that there are people in this church that have gifts, talents, that we need to make a place for you. We need to make a place for you to utilize those gifts. And so I had the idea for a Creative Circles. God gave it to me. And so next Sunday... Uh, two o'clock, we're going to be just kind of showing you all the creative things that we do. If you're interested in that, if you've ever been interested, we'll train you. You don't have to know how to do it all, uh, but child care is provided. But if you could go online and sign up for that so we know we make sure your kids are taken care of, that'd be great. Um, so we're going to jump into a new series today called Imperfect Family. There is no such thing as a perfect family. If you think your family is perfect, then you're the one that makes it imperfect. You're the one... <laughs> that messed it up. So there's no such thing as a perfect family. And we're going to talk about that today. And how many of you know that uh, God, I love this about God. He, when he tells us to do something, he doesn't just say, good luck. He says, I'm gonna, I want you to do this. And here's the way you can do it. He gives us tools. And so there's ways that we can have uh, healthy relationships. I'm going to talk about, a lot about marriage today, but we're going to talk about relationships and your friendships, the way you raise your kids. Oh, man, this happened last time. Uh, But we're going to talk about that today. And when pastors are asked to talk about relationships, it's funny because the spouses, you usually want to stay home because I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting all the stories, all the things over 12 years of marriage for this moment. And so I'm excited, but I've cleared everything with Nicole, so I think we're going to be okay. Uh, It's going to be great. But God is, uh, he loves relationships. How many of you know that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing, we're experiencing around the world. Man, if we could just get back to like healthy families and just like loving people well, loving our families well, loving our friends well, man, a lot of that stuff, all you need is love. You know, that, a lot of that stuff would take care of itself. So we're going to talk about how God wants us to have healthy relationships and uh, he's given us the tools. But the world likes to mess things up, right? The world likes to give an alternative to God's way. And so we're going to look this morning about uh, the world's way and God's way. And sometimes we want God's results, but we don't want to do it God's way. And it doesn't work like that. We got we to gotta invite God into the equation. There's no such thing as a 50-50 marriage. It's two people giving 100%, 100% of the time and inviting God into the equation. So when you do that, he can... Uh, He can do things. So the Bible is very clear in Romans chapter 12, verse two, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Everybody say good, Good. pleasing Pleasing. and perfect. God wants us to have healthy relationships. So he says, don't do it the world's way. Do it my way. I'm going to give you a roadmap. I'm going to give you steps to have healthy relationships. And when you do that, I will 
I will reveal my will for you and your family. So we're gonna dive into that. We're gonna talk about how the world does it and then how God does it. And before I get into the, your notes, something that's so amazing about God, he's so, uh, he's so committed to relationships and healthy families that he gives us a scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, verse four. It says, never will I leave you or forsake you. Never will I leave you or forsake you. He's commitment, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, how we have to be committed in our relationships to do things God's way. And he's so committed. How many of you know God makes us his promise, but he's already in tomorrow. He's already there, and he knows that we're gonna mess things up. He knows that we're gonna make mistakes. He knows that there's things that we're gonna do that are gonna hurt him, but he's still willing to say, never will I leave you or forsake you. Never will I leave you knowing that we're going to mess things up. If we brought that into our families, man, my, I, listen, I mess things up. Ask Nicole. I mess things up. It happens. But God is saying, we're, I'm committed to you. No matter what you do, no matter what mistakes you make, uh, I'm going to be committed to you. And so we're going to look at the world's way and God's way. So if you're taking notes today, the world says that we should find the right person. We should find the right person. We spend a lot of time, you know, if you, if you go to Bible college or you go to Christian university, it's like, hi, my name's Sarah. Hi, my name's Brad. Uh, do you believe in speaking in tongues? Do you believe in uh, ministry? Do you, do you want to go on mission field? So it's like we, we automatically, uh, we, we're thinking we got to find the right person. And then number two, it says that we fall in love. I don't know about you, but every time I've fallen, it's not a good thing. Like when I fall, it's not something I want to celebrate. So we don't fall in love. We have to choose love. Amen? Amen. Number three, we, we tend to fix our hopes and dreams on the other person. Well, what happens when that relationship doesn't work out? You change your hopes and dreams. Oh, you're from Florida. I love Florida. I've never been there. But I think we could, I think we would make something work in Florida. Oh, we're going to break up? Okay, I'll meet somebody else. Oh, you're from Washington State. Did I tell you I love Washington State? <laughs> I love it. I've always wanted to live there. Uh, so we put all of our hopes and dreams in the other person. And then number four, if failure occurs, we just repeat steps one, two, and three. We just go back to the start and we say, I'm going to find the right person. I'm going to fall in love. I'm going to change my hopes and dreams. And we'll just start this thing all over again. And so, uh, so that's the way the world tells us to do it. That's right. But God has a way. Everybody say God's way. God's way. God has a way that's better than the world's way. Yes. Not just in marriage, but in relationships uh, in general, God has a better way than our way. God doesn't, uh, he doesn't just say you can't do this, or you can't do that um, because he wants to punish you. He hates sin. God hates sin and what sin tries to do to destroy you. And so God says, I want to make a way for you to live in victory over sin because I don't want sin messing up your life. I don't want sin messing up your marriage. I don't want sin messing up your relationship. And so God's made a way for us to have healthy relationships. And so we're going to talk about God's way. The world says that we have to find the right person, but God's way says we have to become the right person. We have to become the right person. God is way more concerned about you being who he's called you to do, to, to be, than doing what he's called you to do. He wants you to be what he's called you to be. And he's made tools available for us to be everything he's called us to be. And I remember when we were praying about coming to Rock Family Church a few years ago, we knew that God, uh, you know, we had taken some time off of ministry and we were, we were serving at some of my best friend's church and they were going through a really hard time and we were able to just kind of be there with them and serve with them. And then we had the opportunity to come here and uh, somebody from the church, they came up to us and they said, hey, I, uh, you know, I, we love having you guys here. And we loved them. And, and he said, I've got this company and I need this position. I'm going to create it for you. If you're willing, man, I'd like to create this position for you and you guys can stay. And we had moved a lot. So we were like, okay, is this the best thing? Do we need to move our kids again? And then as we dove into that, to that uh, position, it turns out that I was going to have to be gone two weeks out of every month away from my family. And now, I'm, that's just for, for us, that's not the, the, the marriage and the family dynamic that we decided that we wanted, that God wanted for us. I'm not telling you, you can't do that. God gives grace for, for the purpose that he has in your marriage and in your life. But for us, we had just, uh, I really don't want to have to use this handheld 
So I'm just gonna try to stand still. Because I like to talk with my hands. Are you guys okay if it just pops a couple of times? Okay. So, uh, so when, when we found that out, we were like, you know what? That's, you know, thank you so much, man. Thank you for that opportunity. But that's not really conducive uh, to the family that God's called us to have. And so we, we turned it down. And plus we knew that God wanted us to come to Rock Family Church. And we're so glad we did. And um, so, but here's the thing. God will never call you to do something that's in conflict with who he's called you to be. He'll never call you to do something that's in conflict with who he's called you to be. And so when we, when we make that commitment to him, then it begins to drive decisions in our lives. I'm going to be in this relationship because this is compatible. It's conducive to who God's called me to be. If it's not, if it isn't, then we don't have to spend a lot of time praying and fasting. We can just say, hey, you know what? Thanks for the opportunity, but this is not going to get me to where God's called me to be. I'm going to put my hopes and dreams in him. And so therefore, I'm going to make a decision that that's just not for me. Amen? Amen. And it really kind of relieves some of the stress and some of the things that we worry about. God's just like, hey, just I've called you to be that. So take that into account when you're making those kind of decisions. The number two thing that is God's way is we, we don't fall in love. We have to walk in love. Right. We have to choose love. There are times that we don't want to choose love. There are times that I don't want to love my spouse. I don't want to love my friend. They do something that hurts me. Nicole and I, we've been married uh, for, a couple year, uh, for a couple weeks. And we were laying there in bed. And, and when we got married, I was, I was having some sleeping issues. And so I had gone to see a doctor about uh, getting some help with sleeping. And so I was on this medication. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. And uh, it ha- made me have these crazy dreams. And so <laughs> we've been married a couple of weeks and I'm laying there and I took this pill and I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I start having this dream. And in the dream, I see this guy and we're playing basketball and things get heated and we're gonna start fighting. And I, just think, I decided it's gonna be a good idea to spit in this guy's face. <laughs> and so I just rear back and I just like, and I give it all I got. Well, as soon as I do that, I wake up and I look over and Nicole has this terrified look on her face. <laughs> and I'm like, I just spit in your face, didn't I? She's like, yeah, you did. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Everything within her wanted to get in the car and go to her mom's house and be like, I've married this madman. What have I done? Get me out of this. And, uh, but she didn't feel like loving me, but she chose to walk in love. When we were dating, we were dating our first date. We went to Applebee's, man. I went big. (laughs) And we're sitting there. And this is our first date. This is a true story. And we're sitting there and I said, hey, I said, uh, I think that this might work. I said, but here's the thing. You got to look at me as a long-term investment. (laughs) You're not going to see a lot of return probably overnight. It's not a get rich quick thing. But I promise you, if you'll commit, that's a true story, guys. Am I lying? Am I lying? That's a true story. And someday she's like, anytime now, God, anytime. I'm still still waiting. (laughs) I'm like, okay. (laughs) But I said that to her and we're we're starting to see some fruit, right? So she, but she chooses every day to walk in love. And I'm not easy, I'm not an easy person to live with. And uh, so God, God wants us to walk in love. The third thing is he wants us to fix all of our hopes and dreams on him. I said that earlier. He wants to fix our hopes and dreams on him. He wants us to be everything he's called us to be. And then number four, if failure occurs, just repeat steps one, two, and three. We say, God, I, you know what? I messed that up, but I know you're dealing with things in my life, and so I'm, gonna be, I'm committed to becoming who you have called me to be. I remember so the first couple years of our marriage, it was, I'm just going to be honest with you, it was terrible. We had a terrible first two years of our marriage. And she... Uh, you know, when two people get together, it doesn't make things, it doesn't make you crazy. You're already crazy. And then when you get married, you just can't hide it anymore. <laughs> there's, there's somebody else in your life and you can't, you know, you're in denial, but, but you're like, I can't hide this anymore. I've got, they're going to see that I am crazy. And so I was crazy, guys. And uh, so when we got married, uh, we uh, just within not even a year, God gave us the opportunity to, to move down to Texas and be a part of a church there. And our pastors there, Pastor Jim and Tamara Graff, were so thankful for them in the season we had there. Um, but I remember them telling me, hey, Brad, there is more good in you 
than there is bad in your, or there is more good in God than there is bad in your marriage. Amen. Amen. And I was like, wow, that's good. He was like, no matter how much bad is in your relationship, there's good, there's more good in God. And I was like, man, I got to hold on to that. And so uh, we, we decided, though, in those times that we were going to be committed. And I remember in the first couple of years, um, I, I, I remember getting to a place where I was just like so desperate for God to bring healing to my marriage. I remember praying. I remember saying, God, I know that you're big enough to heal this marriage. I know that you can do that. And I know that, and I want it. And I believe she wants it most days. And... <laughs> And I know, so why are we not seeing breakthrough? Why are we not getting to where you want us to be? And God began to reveal things in me, and he began to say, there are things in your life that are sending mixed signals to Nicole. And I was like, what does that look like? And there, are fear, there were fears and insecurities in her heart that I was going to hurt her. I was going to uh, be unfaithful to her. And then I started seeing that maybe, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't anything, you know, a moral failure or anything like that. But God began to say, you know what, you're watching things on television that act like infidelity is no big deal. And you're telling her, you can trust me, I'll never hurt you. But then I'm entertaining something that is not God's way. And so she's like, well, I know he says that, but he's okay with this. This isn't bothering him. And so God began to say, he took me to the Song of Solomon, he says, there's small foxes that spoil the vine. There's little things, and I'm not telling you what you can and can't watch on TV. That, in my season, God was like, are you willing to lay down anything to see your marriage here? And I was like, yeah, of course. I don't, I don't care about what's on, t- I mean, I want to have a healthy family. Yeah. So I will lay that down. Yeah. And God required that. And then music, it was another thing, you know, some things that I listened to. And I was the kind of person that I like to buy music. I wasn't one of those, anybody Napster? Remember Napster? Where you get songs illegal? And I, so I, I didn't like that. I would pay for music because I was a musician. And so God was like, you need to delete some of the songs in your life. You need to delete this. And I was like, God, that's a lot of dollars. <laughs> that's a lot of dollars. And he was like, do you want your marriage to be healthy? And I was like, you know what? Yes, I do. And so I, he gave me the grace to do that. And so I'm not telling you you can't listen to secular music. I'm not saying that. That was just in that season, God was like, this is what I'm asking of you. If you want to see God's, my way in your marriage, are you willing to do what I ask you to do? My way. And I'm like, yes, I will. Amen. And so, um, so the fourth thing is, or wait, where am I at right now? Right there. If failure occurs, repeat says one, two, three. Become the right person, all that. I think I said it already. But uh, so here's the thing. If we're going to commit, there's things that we got to commit to doing. We got to pri- we got to do some things. And so number one is we have to commit to prioritize you. I commit to prioritize you. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is something that I have to work on. Being in ministry, I love people. I love helping people. And uh, and so there's times that I have to be honest about the fact that you know what I've got to protect my family. Amen. And there's people that, you know, I want to help. It just happened recently. Somebody wanted to talk to me, and, and I was like, well, with schedules and everything, I was like, well, maybe we can talk on Friday. And so I called Nicole, and she said, Friday's your day off. You don't need to do that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I, I want to make my family a priority. And so I had to call that person and say, hey, we'll work it out another time because I can't do that. I got to protect my family. I got to prioritize and let them see that they are a priority for me, especially raising kids right? I mean, you got to lean in. You got to really say, I'm going to be there for my children. I'm going to, I'm going to lean in in these moments. These develop, I've got two sons and man, they're, they're, the, they're the pride of my heart and uh, I love them so much, but I, I've got to be intentional and I've got to let them see, like, I prioritize you over ministry. I prioritize you yes. because if I don't have a healthy family, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So I have to show them that. We have to uh, commit. So say, I commit to prioritize you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Uh, number two is I commit to pursue you. I commit to pursue you. Our marriage wouldn't be that great if like we got married and I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like I don't have to work anymore. Right? There's a lot of guys that are willing to do what it takes to get the girl, but they're not willing to do what it takes to keep her. There's a lot of girls that are willing to do what it takes to get him, 
but they're not willing to do what it takes to keep him, right? I'm stepping on toes, right? I'm, so, I'm, just, being, I'm just being real, right? Like, but we have to be honest about that. And so we have to say, I'm gonna pursue you. So when, when Nicole and I got married, I was messed up, man. And, and I got married quick. I mean, we got married, we started dating in November. I asked her to marry me in December and we got married in February. I would not suggest that, okay? Don't, don't do it that way. But I didn't want to give myself time to screw it up. So I was like, if I wait too long, I'm going to mess this up. She's going to change her mind. So we got to get married. So we got married super fast. And it's the best decision I ever made. And, uh, but we paid the price. So, but I've got to pursue her. I've got to pursue my children. I've got to, I've got to let them know, hey, you're important to me. You're a priority for me. I'm going to pursue time with you. And, and the scripture says, uh, look, I stand at Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. Jesus pursues you. God doesn't tell us to do anything he's not willing to do himself. Amen. And he says, I'm knocking on the door. I'm pursuing you. And so he asks us to pursue those things. The number three is I commit to possess you. And this makes people go silent. You don't own me. <laughs> I'm not your thing. You don't own me. But to possess something means it belongs to you, right? So like, I belong to Nicole. Yes. I belong to her. She belongs to me. And so I, there's a possession there. And God, it's beautiful. This is God. He says, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest. You are a holy nation. God's very own possession. We belong to God. He models that for us. And so in my relationships, in my marriage, you belong to me. And, and, and I, I love you. And I'm, I'm going to pursue you. I possess you because you're important to me. I prioritize the relationship that I have with you. And as a worship leader, it's amazing. Like we talk about having a lifestyle of worship. And what that means is when we put value, worship, the best definition of worship is it's our response to what we value the most is the definition of worship. And so our lives should reflect that we value God's way above anything else. So my loving my family is an act of worship because I live in a way that reflects that I value what God has entrusted to me. And so I create boundaries that are going to protect that. Amen. And that leads us to the next thing. Number four, I commit to protect you. I commit to protect you. And that was something, if we're being honest, that I wasn't very good at in the beginning of our marriage. I had come out of a season where I was like an open book and I wanted accountability and I wanted to just like, you know, I didn't want any skeletons in the closet. And so when we would go to get counseling uh, from our pastors and stuff, I would, just, I would just throw it all out there. And there were things that were in Nicole's heart that I didn't need to share with them. And I didn't protect her very well. And it made me look like the good guy it made me look like the one that was seeking help. And so it became like, hey, we're teaming up on her. And God convicted me of that. He was like, you need to protect her. And so I was like, man, I'm not good at that. And so God began to help me, you know, find balance and, you know, honesty and, and vulnerability, you know, in a healthy way, in God's way, right? So that was something that was a big deal. And so I had to learn how to protect. I'm going to tell you something. If you're hanging out with people that are, that are bashing their spouses or bashing their friends, just stop it. Amen. You know, I want Nicole to have healthy relationships and friendships, but I don't want her to go and hang out with people that are, you know, it's like my husband did this and he's that and he's this. And, you know, I'm not talking about being fake, right? And there, but we need to guard who we allow to see into those things. And so that's important for me. I don't want to worry about when she's out hanging out with her friends. Like, is she telling them all the things? There's a lot of things that are bad, guys. And I'm like, is she, is she just venting? Is she just telling them how terrible I am? And so we guard that. Yes. And that's protecting. So I, I just encourage you. You know, if, if, if you're hanging out, and even in friendships, if you're hanging out with people and they're bashing other friends and stuff, listen, when they're with all those people, they're, they're doing that to you too. And so we need to guard that. We need to protect our relationships. Psalms 121, seven says, the Lord will protect you from all dangers. He will guard your life. He will guard your life. We need, to, we need to protect our families. We need to protect our relationships, amen? And then number five, it says, I commit to purify you. 
I commit to purify you. We need to commit to forgiveness and restoration. We need to commit that we're gonna say, hey, the things that are going on in my life, you know, the things that are wrong in my marriage, I'm gonna forgive you. And we don't need to hold things over our spouse's head and our friend's head. You know, when Nicole, uh, when we first got married, uh, I didn't clear this one third, so I might pay for this one later. Um, she knew exactly what to say, man, right? Like she knew how to just go straight for the gut punch. So when we would fight, she, she was like a surgeon. You know, she's like. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that hurts. But she knew. She knew. But as we grew, we were like, okay, God's bringing healing. So I'm not going to bring that stuff up. I'm not going to bring up your past. I'm not going to bring up the mistakes you've made. I'm not going to make you keep paying the price for things that happened a long time ago. Listen, none of us are the same people we were back when we got married. None of us are the same people we were, you know, yet, hopefully yesterday, last year. God is, we're, we're changing from glory to glory. We got to pick up our cross every single day, amen? And so we, we got to make sure that we are going to purify. We're not going to, we're not going to magnify the things that are wrong with our spouses and make them feel guilty for that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we got to be committed to that. And we got to say, God, no matter what you're calling me to do for my family, I'm committed to, to protecting them, to pursuing my family, I'm gonna prioritize them, and God, I'm going to purify them, I'm gonna protect them. You know, when my, my children, I, lo I love my kids so much, I love being a dad, I love being a dad. I'm not always the best dad, but I love being a father. And when they make mistakes, that's when I want them to run to me. Yes. Like, I want, that's when they need me the most. And I want them to feel that. Like when they make a mistake, I'm not just gonna be like, you're this, you're that. I want them to feel like this is a safe place. Pastor Aaron said something, you know, uh, this week that was really, it just encouraged me. He, you know, we, our kids, you know, we're having a meltdown and stuff. Every kid does it. And he was like, you know, your home is a safe, they're doing that because it's safe. That's right. They're doing that because it's a safe space for them. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. It, it, it made me feel better. It's like, I'm not a terrible father. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, it is a safe space. He can, so he's being vulnerable. He's, so we've got to do that. We've got to purify. We've got to say we're going to protect what God has entrusted with us as a family. Amen? And so that, that's what God wants. We've got to be committed. We've got to be committed. And we've got to say that no matter what happens in our families, no matter how many times we make mistakes, and listen, you know, the Bible is very clear about divorce and things like that. So I'm not here to condemn you. God, is, God loves to bring healing and restoration. Yes. Amen? Amen? He loves it. And so just like we said, repeat, if it fails, repeat step one, two, and three. Yes. So I, I encourage you to ask yourself, say, God, who, who am I being that's, that's causing these things? What, what are you asking me? If I lay this down, I'm going to see victory. I'm going to see breakthrough in these things in my life. And so I challenge you to ask that. God, at the beginning of the year, he said, I want you to, are you willing to ask for eyes to see and ears to hear what I'm saying for you? And let me tell you something. You know where he started? He, he started with me. When I started praying that, God was like, you need to step it up. And I was like, God, I can't do any more. And God was like, I don't want you to do more. The reality is you're relying on your gifts. And if you do what only you can do, there's no room for me. There's no room for him. And he's like, where do I come in if you're just relying on stuff that you can do? So God was like, I want you to take a step of faith. I want you to step it up because there are people that are gifted in ways that you're not. There, there are people that, that have these, uh, these talents and they love, they love to do things that you're not good at. And so you need, to, you need to take a step of faith. You need to do more. And God began to clean my heart. And, and I, was like, I was like, God, that's not what I had in mind really when you said, give me eyes to see, ears to hear. I thought you were gonna give me like some, something to speak for the political unrest and all the things going on in the world. And I was gonna speak truth to power. And God was like, no, you need to step it up. You need to do better. And it's not because he's mad at me. It's because he loves me. Yes. It's because he hates sin. Amen. He hates what sin does to your family. Amen. He hates what sin tries to do to your marriage. 
He hates what sin tries to do in the relationships that you have with your children. And I know we're, we're wrapping it. I'm going to wrap it up. And we went a little bit long. Worship went a little bit long. But I just think I, I want to challenge you with this. We prayed for, for families, that kids that ran away. If that was your kid, would you, would you be glad that we took a little bit of extra time for God to like, you know, maybe do something in their hearts? And so if you just give me just a few more minutes, I'm going to wrap this up. And then we'll let you guys go. But God, God he loves us. He loves us and he's given us tools. And he said, if you'll commit to my way, I promise you, I promise you that you can have a life that's greater than anything that the enemy tries to use to destroy you, to destroy your children and your children's children. If you commit to me to be all I've called you to be, I will heal your families. There is more good in God then there is bad in our broken relationships. And he is a God that loves us. And he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I know you're going to mess up. I know you're going to make decisions that hurt me. And you're going to make bad, you're going you're to go down the wrong path. But here's the thing. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus. And he said, I love you so much that sin's trying to separate you. So I'm going to send my son to die for you, to make a way for you to get back on track. So that I can be glorified in your lives and in your families. That's love. That's walking in love. The Bible says God is love. And he gives us grace. He doesn't just dangle it in front of us and say, man, you know, I hope they get there one day. He says, I, if you will just trust me, I can bring healing. I can bring, you know, things that you never imagined. If you'll just commit and you'll say, I am committed to this relationship. I am committed to God. I am committed to my family. And it's not, there's no condemnation in Jesus. The Bible says that God delights in showing mercy. He delights in it. When my kids make a mistake, I love that they come and they apologize. I'm like, you know what, buddy? We're gonna learn from this. We're gonna grow from this because you're a child of God. You're not the sum total of your mistakes. You're not the sum total of your bad decisions. So we're going to learn from it. We're going to grow. And I love that. And I want them to know that they can come to me for that. That's how God loves us. That's how much he loves us. Would you guys stand to your feet? I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you for every family that's represented, God. We thank you for that you love us so much that you give us tools, God, to, to have the lives that you want for us. You give us tools to be the people you've called us to be, Lord. We thank you that you're not just up there laughing at us when we make mistakes and we fail. You're like, oh, I knew it. You're, 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 you're there. You're saying, hey, get up. I love you. I want to heal you. I want to restore what the enemy is trying to take away from you. I hate sin and I hate what sin is doing to your heart. And so if you will let me, if you will surrender, only God can, is, is the one that we can bring our worst and exchange it for his greatest. There's no other religion that does that. Only God says, you bring the worst of your life and you exchange it for my glory. You exchange it for my grace. You exchange it for my mercy. I'm gonna bring healing to your family. I'm gonna bring your children home because you bring, you, maybe you messed up. Maybe you weren't the best parent. God says, I will restore what the enemy has tried to use to break off your life and destroy you. God will destroy it. So God, we thank you. Sorry, I, I went back into like the preaching. I was praying. God, thank you. We love you. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for being for us. God, we just thank you. You know, if you're, if you're here this morning and you're believing for, for family members to come home, if you're believing, you know, you, there's seeds that are in their hearts and you're praying for God to draw them back, just raise your hands right now. Raise your hands right now. Father, I pray that you would draw hearts back to their parents. You would draw hearts back to what you've instilled in them, what their parents have poured into them. And God, I pray against every lie. I pray against every distraction. I pray against everything that the enemy tried to use to bring guilt and doubt and shame. And Father, I just pray for peace over these parents. 
I pray that they would be able to rest in the peace, knowing that even though they don't see it, you are moving behind the scenes. You are doing something in the hearts of their children. Lord, that they would rest in knowing. They don't have to do it in their own strength that your grace is sufficient, your spirit is powerful, your anointing can go wherever they are and you can draw them back to the Father's heart. So Lord, we pray that over every family and we thank you that you love us that much. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Before we go every week, thank you for giving me extra time. I really appreciate it. But before we go, we never wanna leave we never want to gather without giving people an opportunity to surrender their heart to the Lord. Maybe you have, uh, maybe one time you walked with God and you've strayed away, you've walked away. God never left you, but maybe you felt like you walked away from him. We want to give you that opportunity. I'm going to count to three. Maybe you need to start a relationship. Maybe you may, never made that commitment, or maybe you did it one time and you've walked away. So I'm going to count to three. I would like for you to raise your hand. Somebody's going to come with come to you. They're going to pray for you. And we're going to make sure you have the tools that you need to live the life that God's called you. And we're, we're going to say, no more can sin destroy what God is trying to do in my life. I'm done with sin. I'm done with the, the things that the enemy's trying to do to destroy me. And I'm going to put on the tools and the armor of God to be everything that God's called me to be. So I'm going to count to three. I want you to raise your hand. Somebody's going to come pray with you. One, two, three. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? Is there anyone here? Is there anybody here? Yes. Yes. Right there. Is there anyone else? God loves you so much. He loves you. He is for you. All right, I want you guys to all go and find somebody that's a heathen. And I want you to invite them to church next week so that they can experience the hope that's in Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the service. If you live here in Colorado Springs or you're going to be in the city, I hope that you'll come and experience the service firsthand. And for those of you that are enjoying the ministry and you're being fed to on a weekly basis, I invite you to partner with us financially and make an investment into the mission and the vision of Rock Family Church. And lastly, if you've never made a commitment and a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, would you make that decision today? Why wait till tomorrow? Why wait till next weekend? I dare you to pray this prayer with me. Would you close your eyes? Would you pray this prayer with me and repeat it? It goes like this. Pray this with me. Say, dear God, forgive me of all of my sins and mistakes. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I invite him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. My life is now in your hands. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Hey, thanks for making that commitment. Will you email us at info at rockfamilychurch.com. Tell us about your new decision to stand up big and live strong for Jesus Christ. We'd love to celebrate with you. God bless you guys. We'll see you next weekend.